Oh, I think we can put our hands together for such a beautiful illustration. Now we want to receive the reading of the biography, and this will be taken by Mr. Richard Kwame Mukwa. Please put your hands together as we go. Biography for my late dad, Brigadier General Thomas, as my younger retired. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. My late dad, Thomas Ezwa Ingwa, affectionately called by his peers, Tommy, and by his children, nephew and nieces, as Uncle Tom, was born on the 10th of August, 1943, in a Siama, a town near Atsim, in the Zimanov district of the Western region to senior Thomas Ezwa Ingwa, who was an educationist, and Mary Afukuju, a trader. My dad had his primary education at the Roman Catholic Boys' School in Dumkwa, Ofei, in the central region of Ghana, and his secondary education at Fijai Secondary School in Takrade, Western region. My dad enlisted into the Ghana Armed Forces as a military officer cadet in 1962 and after his training passed out as a first as a second lieutenant in 1963 September. After receiving his commission by Osage Fort Dr. Kwame Nkrumah in 1963, he was posted to the first Battalion of Infantry in Takrade. He then moved up to the Airborne Force where he became a paratrooper and a platoon commander. After successfully, as, uh, after successfully attaining his military commission, my dad had various courses and was posted to Parachute Battalion, 3rd Battalion of Infantry, also served at Badasu, 4th Battalion of Infantry, and back to 3rd Battalion of Infantry in Suyani. As part of his military professional development, my father participated in several military courses, notably Platoon Commanders, Company Commanders course at the Military Academy, Teshi Mungwa. He also attained a signal, a signal instructor's course and also became a pay office officer. Other courses he attended included the Junior Defense College and senior courses at the Ghana Armed Forces Staff College, Teshi. He also went to Georgia at the United States of America, Fort Bragg, to attain his advanced military course and senior crisis management course also in Washington, D.C. Throughout his accomplished career, my dad held several notable military and civilian appointments, which positively impacted many lives. Some military appointments he held include General Staff of Secretary 3 Operations at the Army Headquarters, Instructor at the Ghana Military Academy and Training School, Company Commander, 3rd Battalion of Infantry, Shinyane, Deputy Director of Personnel at the Ghana Army Headquarters, the civilian appointments he held were Commissioner of Customs, which is now the Ghana Revenue Authority, and also he was also appointed uh, Acting Chief Executive at the National Sports Council. 
After his military appointment and settlement, he now became a brigadier. He was promoted to the rank of a brigadier general and became the commander of the first infantry brigade group, now known as the Sounding Command in Accra. He held other notable appointments, such as acting chief executive, national sports council, and the commissioner of customs, preventive service in 1990. Sorry, that's a repetition. He commanded also peacekeeping operations in the United Nations Interim Force in Lebanon and attained the rank of Deputy Force Commander. He also commanded the Ghana Battalion Number 29 in Lebanon. And before his retirement, he commanded the Ghana Ecomog Corps in Liberia and then Sierra Leone from 1996 to 1998. Before his discharge from the military, uh, from the military, he was appointed as state protocol. So he was appointed as an officer at state protocol department from January 2000 to January 20, uh, to June 2022. Sorry, June 20, 2002. Before his honorable discharge from the army after 40 years of service, my father was a staunch Catholic and worshipped at many Catholic churches. He was also a choir star, where he served with the St. Catherine Church in Birmingham, and before his demise, he was a choir star at the Corpus Christi Parish Church in Sacramento. During the latter part of his life, he was also part of the Tema General Choir. My father was also a marriage counselor and a patron of St. Teresa's Child of Jesus and the junior choir and the main choir. His social life, his hobbies included lawn tennis, football, hockey, and volleyball. He loved music, especially classical and gospel. Marriage life. My father, Brigadier General Thomas Ezra Ingua, is survived by his dear wife, Rosama Ingua, and his three children, big sister, Akuba, Nana Akuba, uh, myself and then Yaba. Brigadier General Ingua, you have fought a good fight through this diligent service to the family, God and country. A beloved family man who epitomized the perfect officer and gentleman through discipline, fortitude, and integrity. In the perfect hope of resurrection through our Lord Jesus Christ, may his precious soul rest in perfect peace. Another one. Yes. 
Then put your hands together and let's welcome our dear brother for another ministration. He's not around. We can wait for him. All right. I think we can wait, can't we?
very silent and very smooth. I wish you could just continue and continue yes, yes. that we need to move on in the program. So now we want to receive an exhortation from the pastor of our sister, Anna Kuba. Like I said earlier on, the Bible says that it's better to go to a house of mourning. And I think the reason why the Bible says that is that the one that has passed on has finished. But those of us that are alive, we still have our race and our course to finish. So if you linger around a, a, a house of mourning, you may, by chance, receive a word of wisdom that can guide you to finish your course well. And I believe that we are in the right place and we have the right person to give us that exhortation. So I want us to rise to our feet, put our hands together as we invite Reverend Alfred Gatti. Hallelujah. 
but because the real man which is the spirit being came from God it either goes what happens is that that part lives forever and ever the spirit or the soul never dies hallelujah so one of the things you must understand even though we said our, our father is passed on his spirit lives forever and ever and he is in heaven now hallelujah so the body remains here because this is where the body was taken from why am i saying this is we want to know and understand why the soul of a man is very very important how do i know i know because the holy bible says so hallelujah and these things are not taught in the classroom that is why it's always better for us to gather at the place of mourning because we hear things about death and prepare our lives towards death because death is something everyone one day would have to face hallelujah so i'm going to read from the book of luke a short passage and then i will just end it there hallelujah just trying to answer the questions the question that says why is the soul of the man very important Luke chapter 16, I'm reading from verse 19. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fed sumptuously every day, which means that he, 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 he fed his body very well. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his soul, his soul. Verse 22. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. Hallelujah. So you can see that the end of every man is death. Whether we like it or not, hallelujah. The end of every man is, is death. So let's let's listen to what happened after death. And the Bible says, and in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and seeing a brother afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. But we thought the rich man was buried. We heard the poor man was buried. But the Bible is saying now that he lifted up his head. That is the spirit man which never dies. So when you are on earth, it depends on how you live your life on earth. That makes you go either to heaven or to hell. Hallelujah. Are you with me? And the Bible says in hell, he lifted up his eyes being in torment and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. Apparently what happened was, when the rich man died, he went to hell. And one characteristic of hell is that hell is really, really, really hot. Really, really, really hot. So a drop of water means a lot in heaven. Hallelujah. And the reason why the rich man went to hell was not because he was rich, but when he was on earth, he never paid attention to the part of his being that lives forever and ever and ever and ever. If it's because of rich, riches that he went to hell, Abraham wouldn't have been in heaven because Abraham was also very, very rich. So he, the rich man went to hell because he never paid attention to his spirit man, that part of his being that lives forever and ever. And the Bible says the poor man, when he died, the 
Bible says the poor man, when he died, angels came for him and sent him to heaven. And so, whilst in hell, the rich man saw Lazarus far and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip his tip, the tip of his finger, in water and cool my tongue, for I am in torment in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receive thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And being, and besides all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. What the Bible is trying to say is that when you go to heaven or to hell, there is no gap or there is no root between hell and heaven. There is no root from hell to heaven and there is no root from heaven to hell. The only root to either heaven or, he or hell is from the earth. And that depends on how you live your life. Whether you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. You know, I, I think this message is very, very important. Probably you are here, you don't believe there's a heaven or there's a hell. But the Bible, the most important book in this world, the book that has been published the more in this life, is saying that there is a heaven and there is a hell. Hallelujah. And I believe that our Father, even as he's hearing us, me preaching this message on this day of celebrating his life, I believe you'll be up there. That this is a very important word. And on this day, if somebody's life should be saved, he'll be very grateful. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into the place of torment. So what the rich man was going to say to Father Abraham is that, if somebody leaves from hell to earth to spread the news that hell is real and heaven is real, they will believe because he's got some four, five other brothers who don't know, who, who never believed hell was real and heaven was real. But if somebody leaves hell to earth to let them know that, look, heaven is real, hell is real, they will believe. But my question to you is that, is, do you think if someone, someone leaves hell to earth to tell all of us that heaven is real, hell is real, would, do you think we will believe? I don't think we will we'll believe at all. I don't think we will believe. Hallelujah. The reason why we will not believe is that even us, we gather. I've, I've heard so many stories about people who, who died and left their body and then came back to life and told their stories. But there are people who heard this and never gave their life to Christ. They never believe hell is real and heaven is real. So Father, Father Abraham told him that Look, there are pastors already preaching that heaven is real and hell is real. And if someone should leave hell to go back to earth to even say it, people will not believe. If they will believe, they should believe the pastors who are, who are preaching on planet earth. Hallelujah. My message is, my brother and my sister, life is an opportunity. Even as we are here, celebrating the life of our Father who passed on. It could be an opportunity for your life to be saved. It could be an opportunity for your life to be saved. It could be an opportunity for you to give your life to Christ. So as you hear the word of God, do not harden your heart. My brother was saying that, look, our Father is gone. He's finished his course. It is up 
to us, you and I, to also finish our course. That one day when we gather, we will say that we live a life pleasing to God. Hallelujah. Yeah. So you are here, I'm speaking to your heart, that if you have not accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, this is a good opportunity for you. This is a good opportunity for you. You are here, you want to give your life to Christ? Close your eyes and pray this prayer with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you just as I am. I know I am a sinner. I've seen a lot against you. But I know you love me so much. If I were to be the only sinner on earth, you would still have come for me alone. So Father, forgive me of all my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And write my name in the book of life. That one day, when the rule is called up yonder, I'll meet up with you and spend eternity with you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Put your hands together for Jesus. that we are all going to leave here with those words ringing in our minds, thinking about where our spirit and soul will spend eternity. We are coming close to the end of the first part of the program. Oh, I'm excited for what is coming again. Uh, we want to take another administration. I hope this will not be the last one. We'll probably get some more in the second part from our dear saxophonist, Brother Ben. Put your hands together.
Brother Ben, will you be my friend? <laughs> if, if you have a program in my church, I'm about to be you there. This is, this is just, I mean, by far, this is one of the most amazing sax players I've ever met. Put your hands together for him. That was beautiful and amazing. So, I just want to explain that um, the, the program is in two parts. Okay, so the, the service part is what we are doing right now that we are just about to conclude. But the program is not finished. After this, we will move to the reception part where we're going to spend an extensive time celebrating the life of our dear family in the family. So please, don't be in a rush to go. And if you see vote of thanks and closing prayer, it doesn't mean that we have closed. We are just finishing the first part of the program. Amen. So, with that said, I want to invite our dear sister Sharifa to give us the vote of thanks for this part of the service, for the first part of the program. Please, can you put your hands together for her as she comes up? God bless you all. And in your times of need, may people gather for you too. God bless you. And thanks for coming. Thank you very much, Sister Sherifa. So, uh, we would like to finish this first part with prayer. We started with prayer. And we want to finish with prayer. So, we will take the closing prayer. And after that, I will hand over to the MC that will take us through the reception. And for the closing prayer, can you put your hands together? Let's invite our dear Pastor Lawrence to give us the closing prayer. Hallelujah. Can we please be on our feet for the closing prayer? Let us pray. Our Lord and mighty Father, we are very grateful for such a time like this. We thank you for your great grace that is abundant in our lives. We thank you for your mercies that is always new in our lives. We thank you for the life that we are celebrating this evening. And we thank you that it is you who brought him this far. And it is you who has taken him wherever you are in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for the family this evening. Your word says in Psalm 73 verse 26. That when the flesh and the heart fail, you, the Lord, you are our strength and you are the one who is going to comfort us. This evening I pray that you strengthen the family in the name of Jesus. The Ingwa family will be strengthened in the name of Jesus. I pray, O oh God, that you will be their shield and their backlog in the name of Jesus. Lord, be a strong tower around them in the name of Jesus. And you alone be their comfort in the name of Jesus. Father, when their legs are weak, O oh God, Lord, strengthen them in the name of Jesus. I pray, O oh God, that you will make a hedge around them and you will surround them as the mountain surrounds Jerusalem in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for favor and grace upon their lives, O oh God. As they celebrate their dad, O oh God, may they also be celebrated in the name of Jesus. Let your faithfulness, O oh God, rest in their lives in the name of Jesus. I pray, O oh God, that as we continue on this program, that your grace will also be part of us in the name of Jesus. That your favor will be with us, and whatever we are going to do will be a blessing. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 So we will now be moving into the second part, which is the reception. And 
It's at this point that I would like to invite Mr. Eric Shabo, if he's here, to take over from now. Thank you very much. My name is Teddy Mensa. I'm in the host of the Thank you. Thank you very much, Teddy. Uh, good evening again. I'm sure you've had the good evenings already, so this is the second good evening. Um, we thank um, the ministers for ministering to us. I'll try and steer in the next part of the event. Um, again, on behalf of the Ingwers, I welcome everyone here. Uh, we're most grateful. We're all related in a way and connected to this family in a way. And as we go through the event, um, we'll try and tease that out. Um, assuming we've been through the logistics already and domestics, I believe the toilets are outside. Uh, there's no fire alarm. If there is a fire alarm that goes off, follow me. I'll go through that door and I'll be very quick. So just follow me then. So Mr. DJ, if you just give us some music and I'll come to you again. So thank you very much again for coming. Thank <laughs> you. 